Hello and welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Today I am going to be uh, talking about a book I am Jorge Escobar, and I'm going to be talking about a book that I bought recently, a couple of days ago. Uh, the book is really good. It's pretty short, but it, it does have a lot of valuable information. Uh, and I want to share it with you all. Uh, the book is called How to Be a Great Student by Kimberly Hatch Harrison. Um, she works at Socratica. I understand that she is the co-founder of Socratica. You may already know her channel Socratica on YouTube. Um, I'm not following her channel very much because um, I recently uh, enrolled into a lot of courses from Udemy, but they do have a really nice SQL um, playlist that I really recommend you. I'm going to link that into the description of the channel down there. And there is another thing. Uh, they do have a playlist for Python development, for Python programming. I haven't seen that yet, uh, but it's on my uh, radar, so to speak, you know. So. Um, stay close for when I review that one. So what are we going to be talking about today? Um, I've been reading this book. Uh, I already read it um, in a couple of sittings. I was trying to get some sleep, <laughs> but I failed miserably a, a couple of days ago, uh, past weekend actually. And um, so I was uh, messing around on Twitter and I saw a post from from Kim. Um, so I decided, why not? What the hell not? Um, I'm not sleepy, so maybe I just need a, a new book to, to get uh, some sleep because sometimes books just uh, uh, make me drowsy and I tend to go to sleep. But uh, this wasn't the case. Um, I really identify with, um, with who this book is aimed at Basically, what this book teaches you is how to actually become a really good student. Um, it's geared towards, um, uh, I believe it's geared towards people that are still in school, you know. I know that's no longer my case. I no longer study anything uh, officially, at least. So, but for college students and probably uh, from middle school or even uh, elementary school students, that will be right, I guess. So, uh, what does what does this book talk about? Um, let's go to the monitor. There we go. So, what you are seeing here on my left side. Let me. Um, oops, did I mess it up? Yes. <laughs> uh, what you are seeing here is the actual table of contents from the book. Um, and basically what uh, we have here is all the chapters for the book. It's pretty short, it's not really a long book. Uh, it took me around uh, three hours or four hours, I believe, to, to finish it. So it's not really that big. And I reread some of the chapters because they were uh, really interesting. Um, basically, the, what I gathered from, from this book is, the, you know what? Uh, the most important things that I think are on this book are uh, in no particular order, I guess. Um, how do you say it? Mm, I will say is how to take your notes. That's chapter two, uh, where she actually makes some comments and mentions the Cornell note-taking um, strategy or technique. And I didn't know about that, not recently at least. Um, I, I, I don't remember listen, um, hearing about it anyway. So the Cornell note taking uh, technique is really useful. I tried once yesterday and seems very effective. I really recommend that chapter. That's something new that I didn't know about. So I really recommend that chapter in particular. Uh, the next one, how to use a planner. I do use Microsoft's um, Office um, Suite. So there is a, a Microsoft Planner there. There are several planners. There is a project planner and a regular planner. I'm using the regular planner. And basically what this chapter talks about is uh, the importance of scheduling your activities. 
including a student. Um, here, we start getting into the idea of the, that cramming, or let's say a student um, at one night before the exam, or before whatever you need to do, is a really bad idea and it's very inefficient. Um, how to use a planner will be a, a really good chapter. Uh, the Pomodoro technique, I already knew that, so uh, I, I'm going to skip that. Uh, I, I read the chapter, but I already knew about the, uh, uh, about the technique, so in my particular case, I already knew the technique, so eh, so so. But this is a really good technique, so if you don't know what Pomodoro is, uh, that will be a really uh, good chapter to get your, uh, your, your hands on, I guess. So, um, how to study for a test uh, doesn't apply to me in particular, so I don't know what to say. Basically, um, she is giving you a lot of um, tips and tricks of how to prepare for an exam, and how to keep cool during the exam, and how to play around with your time. It doesn't apply to me, so I don't really recommend it for software developers like myself that already have a job. Um, what I get from this book is basically how to learn new things, especially in software development where there are a lot of programming languages, uh, frameworks, and uh, what tools and whatnot. So it's a really good um, chapter for students. I don't know. I'm not a student anymore, but... Uh, if that's your case, I'd like to hear about it in the comments. So, uh, one very useful chapter will be seven, uh, how to improve memory. Um, I do really have issues remembering uh, stuff, especially when time comes by and, and passes time, you know. Uh, when there is a lot of time between uh, the point where I learn something and the point where I need to remember the stuff, uh, as the gap between those two uh, widens open, uh, then I tend to forget the really important stuff. And this happens to everybody, I believe. Um, you may like to think that you have really good memory, especially if you are working with something all the time. But the truth is, and that happens to me a lot, is that, uh, especially with programming languages, uh, you may be, uh, you may remember yourself being great at some programming language, uh, but then you move into something else or even a new framework, and after six months or so, you actually begin forgetting stuff. And I don't, uh, and I don't mean the the uh, the advanced stuff that that tends to be uh, uh, the things that you may like to think that you are going to forget. No, I mean the, the basic stuff. Uh, how to log a message, how to actually compile a program, or how to write a, a very basic program in some language and you don't, you just don't remember. Um, that happens to me a lot. Um, how to improve your memory. Uh, Kimberly talks about um, an issue that I haven't thought about yet, uh, but I believe it happens to me a lot, is that there is like a, a remembering curve so to speak, where basically when you learn something new, your brain retains it very well. As time passes, um, basically you forget about it. So a solution to solve that is to refresh or keep refreshing the knowledge um, uh, in the near future, basically. She describes uh, this technique in very deeply and very well on the chapter, so that's why I recommend you to actually read the book. So, um, uh, how to improve your memory, that's another very important. Uh, how to use flashcards, again, uh, since I'm not a student, uh, and I'm not a fan of analog note-taking, I'm more like a, a keyboard kind of guy, you know, uh, on the computer, I guess. So, uh, I don't really have flashcards at hand, or I don't really, uh, I'm not a flashcards guy anyway, but there, there is a really good technique that I saw in a video about this actually, and seems to be working very well for students. Come again, uh, then again, I'm not a student anymore. It's been long on those days. So 
uh, how to use flashcards may be useful for students. I don't, I don't really know. One technique that I really like, and probably is going to be the best chapter in my opinion, is chapter nine, the, the use of the Feynman technique, which is basically explaining something in very simple terms. Now that I am involving myself with YouTube, um, I am explaining uh, programming concepts on my YouTube channel. Alas, in Spanish, because that's my natural language, my first language, and uh, I not, um, well, English is not my first speaking language anyway, but um, I was thinking, you know what? I do know that there is a lot of more people, there is more people that is interested in programming uh, that, that are English speaking. Uh, however, I was thinking about, you know what, maybe since I already know how to speak Spanish and I already know that there are not many resources in my first language uh, about programming, maybe I could uh, help a little bit to the guys that, uh, or girls that um, basically they don't have uh, the, the resources or they don't know English or they, they cannot understand English very well. And there is a lot of resources that are only, um, they exist like uh, just in, in English, for example. Um, a very good example of this is um, video courses on Udemy. Uh, they are great, but the really good ones are only in, for English speakers, basically. So that's an issue that is not an issue for me because I do understand English for the most part. Uh, f but um, I do understand why a lot of Spanish speaking people and especially young students, they haven't been around uh, for too long and they still don't get the hang of the English language, at least not at the point of just listening and, and basically uh, assimilating all the, the lecture by just listening. They need to read subtitles, even if they are in English. They need to read subtitles. They need to um, uh, under understand the context of the phrases and all of this. Um, okay, so basically mm, I was thinking about, you know what? Uh, I already talked about um, how to learn to code in my podcast, and this is the video version of that and the audio version too, I guess. So uh, I was thinking, you know what, maybe I should just focus on speaking about this subject in Spanish and see how it goes, you know, because you never know, maybe there is no interest in my, uh, in Spanish about this, who knows? Anyway, um, the Feynman technique is about uh, explaining simple stuff uh, in very simple terms and explaining complex subjects in very simple terms too. Basically, the technique is about, um, if you are able to explain uh, a complex subject to somebody else uh, in very simple terms, then that means that you uh, and, the other, and the other person actually understands, obviously. That means that you already know the subject very well. So uh, that's basically the Feynman technique. Uh, again, the book actually explains this uh, in great detail and is way better than me. Anyway, how to use office hours. Again, a chapter for people that is actually a student in a school, basically. So I'm not a student anymore. Uh, this chapter doesn't apply to me or I don't think that applies to uh, anybody that is already working somewhere. Um, how to take a test, again, is, um, a chapter for people that, that, that is still in high school or college or whatever. So it doesn't apply to me. So I really didn't get too much value from that. However, I guess that this book is actually for students anyway. So that may be, uh, well, it's not limited to the to students anyway. Now you're going to explain why. Um, the next chapter is called uh, how to answer multiple choice questions again another chapter for people that is actually in school. Um, uh, is, I would love to know all of this, 
when I was still on, on high school or, or university, you know, on, or college. Um, is I don't have any use for this anymore, but I guess that if I was still uh, a student in a natural school, I would actually find this information really valuable anyway. Now, uh, how to improve your writing? This is one of the subjects that I've been very, um, uh, I struggle a lot with writing. One of my personal projects is writing a book uh, about databases because that's basically what I'm, uh, uh, I do, basically, <laughs> databases, relational databases for that matter. And, um, and I want to write a fundamentals book for databases in Spanish too. Um, however, I discovered that you can basically run JavaScript inside eBooks, which means what you are thinking that it means I can basically run JavaScript uh, so I can basically put somewhere around there a, a little button when you press it the entire book translates to Spanish or to English and vice versa. That's what I was thinking about. I haven't experimented with that yet because I do have stuff to do before that. But it's on the radar too. Uh, how to improve your writing? Uh, it contains a lot of good, really good information about how to actually uh, come about writing essays and, and basically in my opinion, writing and thinking are the same thing. That's why this chapter um, uh, resonates with me a lot. Since I think that um, thinking and writing are the same thing, then this uh, chapter talks about um, how to improve my actual thinking, you know? A really good chapter, actually. Uh, and then, Another chapter for people at the school is you should go to summer school. Um, this is uh, basically one of the, f the final chapters, again, for people that actually goes to school. It uh, doesn't apply to me, so uh, anyway. Uh, I don't get too much value from this chapter, but the rest of the book is great, anyway. And the last chapter, and I will actually uh, believe that this could be the start of a new book, actually. It's called How to Take Online Classes. This was a bonus chapter due to the pandemic time, you know. Um, I do work as a software developer for a database developer. I am, my position, my official position is a data engineer, uh, and that job is remote and to get extra cash I work as a janitor and a watchman in a Montessori school so um, uh, talking about humbling myself <laughs> so extra money and uh, it's very easy money for me because all I have to do is uh, clean some toilets uh, clean clean the school basically and um, I get to stand uh, all night long uh, with internet access by myself during the night. So I am going to be awake anyway uh, during those nights. So I pick up my laptop and I get to study or develop or watch YouTube or whatever, you know. Actually, during those nights, I see myself learning the most because I am completely alone there. There is nobody there. And uh, I used that time to basically read books like this one. And actually, during the, uh, this, I, could, I read this book during the night, the first day. And the next day, during the day, I finished the book. And I reread the book during uh, the next night. So uh, uh, being alone, uh, and especially in, in, during the pandemic, because in Mexico, it's still going and it's nowhere near to go away anyway. Um, really good um, to be alone by yourself and have a really good book that you can actually uh, review. And I read it like twice already. And I believe that these are really good uh, uh, advice for people that want to learn really, really fast. So that will be uh, my uh, review of these books. Obviously, this is not scripted, 
So you, you, you understand. It's a podcast anyway. And I'm going to upload this at YouTube at some time, I guess. Uh, anyway, uh, another thing that I would like to talk about. Let's change the scene here. There we go. Um, although the book is... My final talks about the book are... Uh, the book is not geared towards um, an adult people, I guess. This book is for young people that are coming through school. and are, But I believe that this book is not just that. It's, this book is actually for one particular set of people. And that particular set of people are, uh, and I don't consider myself one of those, I think. Uh, I believe this book is um, geared towards a special needs kid. And I know what you're thinking. Just, just hear me out. Um, not, not any kind of a special kid. Well, I'm not a psychiatrist, or so, but uh, what I mean is, I wonder if you already know something about uh, gifted kids. In my opinion, gifted kids are special need kids. Why? Because um, they are gifted. You know, they are very young and they show some promise. Uh, they are very smart, and we had seen those kids on, on, on media, in TV shows, um, in all TV shows, where these uh, wonderful kids are uh, working with computers at a very young age. And my question is always the same. Where are those kids today? And uh, I believe that those, uh, those kids, those gift, gifted kids, they seem to be uh, very smart and they are really smart and they go to school and the first years during school uh, they are so smart that they don't really need to study they don't need to study and the subjects are very boring for them because uh, they are really easy to understand obviously because they are elementary school level students you know uh, and they are so smart that they use that smart, uh, they use their intellect as a strength, you know, as if they were a fighter in, in real fighting. Uh, with raw strength, you can beat somebody uh, without training, actually. You don't need to train as long as you are big and strong. You can, uh, with raw strength, you can beat somebody up, up to a point. What happens when somebody is trained and trains constantly is going to get to a point where raw strength, and in this case, raw intellect, is not going to be enough. And I believe that this book is talking about those people. It's geared towards those people because um, it's going to be one level for the gifted kid here. And he's going to grow up. Well, he doesn't really grow up. He's going to be there. And the difficulty of the things he's going to face is down here, you know? And then the difficulty comes up, comes up. And maybe the kid is, um, uh, is around here. It's going to be to a point where the difficulty of the things that... Uh, oh, my God, my hand is doing something weird there. Um, the difficulty of the things that the gifted kid is facing is here. And the gifted kid is here. So, so far, so good. Uh, but now he's struggling to pass exams. He's struggling to get the answers. And he's struggling to be among uh, the rest of the kids, you know? And that's the issue. He went from being a gifted kid to be one of the bunch. And that's just the beginning. Because as time comes, uh, prog progresses on, he's on high school now. And probably he's, a, he's a still passing his exams or her exams, but he's a struggling. He cannot go to his parents because, one, uh, his or her parents are doing, um, they are getting money, they are doing their own thing, you know. And most of the time, gifted kids are alone during their studies. I mean, they are practically abandoned because you know what? My kid is so smart. My son is so smart. He doesn't need my help as an adult. And even if even if the parent wanted to help 
to study to this kid, you know. Sometimes parents just cannot do that because uh, the subjects that um, we see in high school, uh, they are not so simple because some of those subjects are algeb algebra, uh, geometry, basic chemistry, and you would be surprised um, how uh, regular people don't really remember those things from their own time in high school, it's been so long. So they don't really remember unless they work as a teacher or something. Uh, but having said that, these kids struggle. They don't know how to, um, how to come through and, and deliver. The, uh, and especially when the expectations are so high, these kids are struggling to meet just the regular standards. That's not a good thing for them. And when you get to high, to college, to college, you know, university, uh, that's where um, the what I call the wall hits. Um, so the gifted kid is here, but um, the difficulty of the task is way up here, okay? So that's what I call the wall, because the kid is going to hit that wall very hard, and it's going to be to the point of, you know what, I cannot, as a gifted kid, I'm very smart and, and all, but with raw intellect, I cannot push through this. And that's where the, the kid, the gifted kid, needs to, needs to actually start studying. And he is going to be facing a really hard time because uh, up to this point, before the war, he has been uh, struggling something. He has been uh, maybe cruising uh, on previous educational levels, you know, maybe high school, and now he hits this wall and he says, you know what, I cannot figure this out on my own right now without uh, actually studying, which is the equivalent of trying to beat um, 18 years old Mike Tyson without training or training the night before, which is not going to be, end. that's not going to end well. And the idea that this book is selling really is, you know what, a student is similar to training. You cannot hope to win a tournament with prepared people, you know, with fighters on, on, on the top of their game. And these fighters have been training all, um, for months, probably years. And it doesn't really matter how big you are and how naturally strong you are if you don't train, you have no real chance of winning the thing. Why? Because if you don't train, in this case, a study, uh, you are not going to uh, measure up to the requirements. And that's, uh, that's just a fact. So what this book is talking about is, you know what? Maybe you are a gifted kid, and what I will consider, quotes, uh, uh, a special needs kid, because uh, so far you, the expectations are being so high that um, if you get to the point that, uh, you know what, uh, I fail an exam, then that special, that gifted kid is going to think, you know what, I feel ashamed because uh, my parents, my friends, or my, my peers, um, we, well, I guess uh, they create these, these uh, expectations that you need to be really good if you are gifted indeed, indeed gifted. So if you're not really good at, and at this level, then uh, uh, where is that intellect then, you know? What do you have to show for in the end? And these people don't have the discipline of a student. This is what, this is what is missing here. So uh, basically, they had been using their intellect uh, to push through, to cruise, and when the time comes to hit the wall, they are not ready because they are still wanting to, they are still want to basically just uh, with raw intellect uh, figure it out uh, on, the, on the way, you know? Uh, and that just doesn't happen anymore. And what do we need to do? Well, this is a really good guide to basically uh, 
face that fear of not measuring up and especially gifted kids are going to find here a solution to the big problem of not measuring up. Why? Because um, if the request is up here and you are measuring just below, uh, there is a lot of things that you are not doing that are here. And those things are basically how to study. And the thing is that these gifts that kids are so used to basically, uh, you know what, the day before the exam, I'm going to study, I'm going to cram, you know, I'm going to spend the entire night reading all this stuff and, and absorbing whatever I can. And the next day, maybe they pass or maybe they fail for a, a little bit of difference and they can, I don't know, maybe they, they bargain with the teacher or whatever. They do extra curriculum uh, credits or whatever. Um, but the thing is that uh, nobody needs to do that as long as you keep, uh, basically the key here is train every day and the equivalent of a student will be a study every day and have a, a schedule, res be disciplined and basically follow your schedule and treat the uh, student part as a long quest. You are not going to beat this mission in half an hour. This is going to be baby steps that need to be uh, one after the other, you know. Um, really good book. There, uh, let's just review finally because uh, this episode is taking way longer than expected. It's already half an hour. Um, for what I gather, what I find myself useful as an adult uh, will be how to take notes in Cornell Notes Taking Technique, chapter two. Um, how to read, oh my God, I forgot about that. How to read your textbook is really good. Uh, not so good as the other ones, in my opinion, though the other chapters are, are better valued, in my opinion, uh, but um, really good anyway. Uh, how to read your textbook is really good for students and professionals like myself. Because uh, when I got this, now I was able to learn a new programming language by reading documentation. And that's a skill that I just developed during the weekend. And I uh, surprised myself actually, just by following the simple steps on this chapter here. And I don't know why I didn't see the chapter before, but anyway, here it is, okay. Uh, how to use a planner. I've been using a planner for my job for quite some time. So this is more like a review chapter for me. Really useful if you don't know how to actually plan your stuff. Please do it. I use a, a tree, a, a hierarchy system um, that I copied from uh, Brian Tracy, very popular guy. And he uses the ABC method where I divide the task by A of type A are tasks that need to be done or uh, very bad consequences come after not fulfilling those tasks. Basically, the A task must be done. A B task is one task that uh, if you don't complete the task, um, it's going to be consequences, but not critical. And a C task is basically any other, are the good to haves, you know? Uh, are tasks that if you do them, they bring value. But if you don't do them, you don't suffer. So basically I divide my tasks in A, B, and C. And then add them to the planner, making the A task the first things in the morning. Basically the first thing to do is the A task, then the Bs, and then the Cs. And most of the time I don't have time to finish the Bs, let alone the Cs. Anyway. How to use the Pomodoro Technique. If you don't know the Pomodoro Technique, this is one of the most important chapters in the book. Please read it. Uh, the Pomodoro Technique is very popular in YouTube. I'm not going to explain it right now. Well, let's uh, give it a, a, a rundown really quickly. Basically, you set a, a clock and you set an alarm at 25 minutes or 20 minutes or so. Let's say 25 minutes of focus work. During those 25 minutes, you are going to focus your attention to your current task. When the task um, is done or not, doesn't really matter. 
most of the time you are not going to finish a task in 25 minutes anyway. The important thing is that it's going to be focus work. Basically, you are not going to check your phone, not going to play video games, you're not going to web browser, you're not going to check email, nothing, just the task. The second that the alarm uh, rings, you stop the task and you you can step up, uh, take uh, drink some coffee, uh, get a sandwich, uh, whatever you want, or walk away from your workstation. Rest for five minutes. When the five minutes run out, you go back and you restart the 25 minutes. And basically you do this over and over again. That's what the Pomodoro technique is basically. So. It's way, it's way better explained during this chapter, so please read the book. Um, and let's see how to uh, the fame and technique. I would say that is the most important uh, chapter for the book, in my opinion. Um, explains uh, complex subjects in simple terms and actually let people understand you. And I'm trying really hard to do just that with my if you see my, my previous uh, YouTube videos in Spanish, <laughs> I'm trying to explain databases to people that may not know what that is. Basically, uh, not necessarily developers. Um, uh, um, what else? How to take online classes, really important too. And I, and I feel like online or remote should be its own book. Maybe I should write about that because I do have a lot of ideas about it. Uh, but maybe I should write a book myself. Uh, I edited a couple of books for some for, for, for other people because uh, ebooks, you don't know, are basically e um, HTML web pages, a static HTML web pages with some CSS. Um, that uh, That's our ebooks basically. And it's not really hard once you get to have it. But anyway, I'm digressing again. Uh, Please uh, get this book. If you are a software developer looking to learn uh, complex subjects in, in a consistent manner, or if you're just like me and you purchase a lot of Udemy courses and you just let them rot. <laughs> uh, I swear to God that my, uh, my Udemy courses, let's see. Um, if you are listening to this, I'm browsing through my, my most recent courses. And, but this is uh, as part of what I, I always finish rambling <laughs> in the end of the episode. But anyway, um, you may not be able to see this, but I'm showing off what courses I am about to take. Um, the last course I completed, as I mentioned in the previous episode, was the, uh, the Bash Mastery, uh, the Complete Guide to Bash script, Shell Scripting. Uh, really useful, I am still using it, and I actually use uh, the Linux box I have as a file server, and as a, and I use that computer to basically uh, do all my video work in the terminal, because there is this amazing program called FFMPG, which allows me to basically compile and convert video formats really fast, because it's command line, and it's very efficient, and what I um, and I don't and it's completely free, you know. But it's absolutely command line, so it's not easy to use. All the contrary, and I got several courses, new courses here. The most important one is going to be this, uh, the uh, the complete C masterclass, C sharp masterclass. As you can see here, I've been toying around with Unity. I am able to do this. Uh, uh, VTuber, I guess, uh, VTuber stuff with Unity and C Sharp basically is the, the blood of Unity. So my next target for next year is going to be becoming a C Sharp developer. Um, probably a, a, for obvious reasons, I'm going to be developing for Unity and for uh, .NET platforms. And, but my real objective for next year is going to be two. One, make a video game, and two, uh, make a VR application. Not necessarily a, a VR game, 
uh, but a VR application nonetheless. I am still getting the hang of tracking hand motion and grabbing stuff on the virtual world. I believe, as I mentioned before, that uh, this metaverse craze is not going away soon. Um, Mark Zuckerberg is, uh, he, he just missed the, the phone revolution. And I believe that he's not going to miss the VR revolution. Uh, I believe that that's coming and he wants to be a part of it. So I'm going to uh, be working on that too. Probably not for the Oculus, for the, for the, uh, the, the meta Oculus, I guess. I don't know how it's going to be called. Anyway, I'm digressing again. <laughs> I'm rambling about. Uh, the book is great. Uh, please consider making a purchase. It's called How to Be a Great Student by uh, Kimberly Hatch Harrison. Uh, check out the Socratica channel. I'm going to leave a link down there. And thank you for coming by and goodbye.